Becoming a data scientist with a degree is a challenge as it is. Becoming a data scientist without a degree is even more of a challenge. Technically, you can learn almost all the skills of a data scientist just by free resources online, which is what I will be sharing later on in this video. The reason I said almost is because crucial skills like communication skills are not easy to learn online, which is a skill that the university degree really helps you to develop. And just to manage your expectations, if you think you can learn all the data science skills in three to six months, then you are simply naive, my data friend, and misguided by those fake gurus out there. Learning data science requires lots of time, years, and lots of effort. But it's all worth it if you can make it at the end, as it's an amazingly interesting job to do, and it pays really well. After you do learn all the skills and become a self-proclaimed data scientist, it will still be a massive challenge to learn a job in data science. And I'm not being pessimistic, my data friends, I'm being realistic. I will be sharing my advice on how to land that data science job without a degree at the end of this video, assuming you have learned all the required skills that I'm going to talk about. Right, starting with the steps to become a data scientist without a degree, as a data scientist you will have to have a very good understanding of maths, statistics, probability and algebra. And in order to learn all this, I suggest buying this book over here, which is called Practical Statistics for Data Scientists. And also, I suggest taking this course over here, which is called Statistical Thinking for Data Science and Analytics, and is provided by the University of Columbia. If you read about this course, it's going to teach you everything you need to know about statistics, probability, uh, algebra, and also some data visualization and Bayesian uh, statistics. This course now is actually free, but if you do want to buy the certificate, you can do. I highly recommend buying the certificates of these courses I'm going to suggest just because you don't have a university degree and you're going to need some accreditation that you do know data science to put in your CV. I will have links in the video description of all the courses and books I'm going to suggest in this video. By the way, if you feel that you're getting enough value out of this video, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for future videos. Moving on, the second thing you should learn is general analytic skills using SQL and Excel. So in this step, you should learn things like database management, reporting, dashboard creation, data visualizations and business KPIs, data mining, cleaning, transformations and storing, descriptive, diagnostic, predictive and prescriptive analytics. Now, in order to learn all of this, I suggest taking a book called Data Analysis Using SQL and Excel, the second edition. And in terms of courses, um, I suggest taking this course over here, which is called Gain Well-Rounded Analysis Skills by Microsoft. This is provided by Microsoft. And it's actually, if you read about this course, it's a three course, uh, a three program course. And if you read about each program, so if you right click and open it, so this one is called Querying Data with Transactional SQL and it's going to teach you everything you should know when it comes to using SQL for analytics. Again, this course is free, but you should you can buy the certificate or you should buy the certificate. Uh, also, another program is the Analyzing and Visualizing Data with Excel, which is part of the same uh, program. And the third one is called Data Analysis Using Excel. I have also created a course on data analytics where I go through what data analysts actually do at work and I teach about analytics, coding, visualizations and insights. So I teach things like uh, Excel dashboards and Excel analytics, SQL analytics, Power BI visualizations and PowerPoint for insights and I teach you how to use these tools in order to generate insights. The next thing you should learn is Python or R and then learn how to run machine learning using those tools. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to use Python to give examples, but you can do the same things in R. 
Before you move into machine learning, I suggest learning some of the most widely used libraries in Python first. For those libraries, the first one is NumPy, which stands for numerical Python. And in this library is where you're going to do all your calculations and maths. The next library is called Pandas. And in this library, oh, sorry, this library is going to help you a lot for data manipulation and data analytics. The next two libraries is matplotlib and seaborn. So these two libraries are going to help you when you're performing your exploratory data analysis and doing visualizations. And then once you do master these four libraries, I suggest moving into sklearn, which is the library you're going to use to run your machine learning models following the machine learning process. This library has tons of machine learning models for you to use. In terms of books, I suggest buying this book over here, which is called Hands-On Machine Learning with SKLearn, Keras, and TensorFlow. This is provided by Aurelien Giron. And in terms of courses, which I highly recommend taking this course, it's called Learn Data Science by Doing Data Science, and it's provided by the University of San Diego. In this course now is actually one, two, three, four courses in this program. Sorry, if you actually read the first one, which is called Machine Learning Fundamentals, right click open, you can see that within this uh, course is you're going to learn about classification, regression, a conditional probability estimation. So it's going to teach you a lot of different uh, algorithms, machine learning algorithms, and it's going to get you started in running machine learning. Additionally, it's going to teach you additional Python for data science, probabilities and statistics uh, using Python, and also big data analytics using Spark. Additionally, if you want to get into deep learning, which is mostly used for video, audio, and image analytics, then I suggest taking this course over here, which is called Deep Learning Explained, provided by Microsoft. And it's going to teach you uh, the components of deep neural networks. And more specifically, it's going to teach you how to build multi-layer perceptrons, convolutional neural networks, recurring neural networks, and long short-term memory models. Uh, another point I want to make is that if you want to take an AI course, so a more holistic view of data science, a more advanced uh, field of data science, AI, then I suggest taking this course over here, which is called Build the Intelligent Future, and it's provided by Microsoft again. This actually takes one year and three months to complete because, again, it's a serious course uh, program to take. Uh, in this course, it's gonna uh, you're going to learn things like Python for Data Science, as we said, Deep Learning Explained, which is what the one I've just suggested before, Introduction into AI, the Law and Ethics of AI, Natural Language Processing, Reinforcement Learning, Speech Recognition, and a lot of uh, com computer vision here and image analysis, and a lot of deep learning algorithms. The next thing you should learn is visualization tools like Tableau, uh, Power BI, and ClickSense. And these tools are the tools you are going to use to communicate your visualizations back to the business or to deploy your machine learning models. I'm going to have links in the video description below of one course per uh, visualization tool. Uh, but please note there are other visualization tools out there. After you learn the first four things, then I suggest taking on a Kaggle competition. Kaggle competition is going to help you test all the knowledge you have gained up until now. Additionally, Kaggle competitions are a very good way to understand some of the things you're going to be doing as a data scientist, which is things like data pre-processing and creating and running your model and your code. And these two tasks now are actually one of the most time consuming tasks of a data scientist. So as you can see here, data pre-processing takes about 25% of your time as a data scientist. So by taking on a Kaggle competition is actually going to give you a very good understanding of what you're going to be doing as a data scientist in your future job. Moving on, the next thing you should learn is basic knowledge on cloud tools. And the reason this is important now is because all organizations nowadays are migrating their data from on-prem solutions into cloud solutions. So you will need to know how to store and extract data from these cloud solutions, 
how to run models and create reports using these uh, cloud solutions and also how to deploy your machine learning models. There are three main cloud solution providers, which is uh, the Azure, AWS, and GCP. I'm going to have three links of three courses in the uh, video description below. After you finish learning all the tools and processes, then you will need to spend time to improve your communication skills. And these communication skills are actually very challenging to learn just online. Just because the best way of learning how to communicate is to actually interact with people, collaborate with people and work in teams. However, communication skills are actually crucial in the data science world just because these are the skills you are going to use to share your model with the business and also these are the skills you will use to educate the business on how to use your model which is basically how you're going to add value to the business by getting people to use your uh, model or your solution. Additionally, communication skills are going to help you a lot in your data science interview phase as you will your answers, technical or not, will have to be crystal clear to the interviewer. In terms of books, I suggest buying this book over here, which is called Communication Skills, a practical guide to improving your social intelligence, presentation, persuasion and public speaking. And in terms of courses, I highly suggest taking this course here, which is uh, called Business Communications and is provided by the University of British Columbia. And this course is all around business communications and it's going to help you communicate effectively in a business setting. The next point I have, which is very related with the communication skills, is to learn how to generate insights and storytelling for impact from your data. And the reason this is super important, again, is because this is actually the step that you're going to use in order to add value to the business. A course I suggest now is this course over here, which is called Analytics Storytelling for Impact and is provided by Microsoft. So this course is actually going to teach you how to apply storytelling principles to your analytics work in order to add value to the business and make an impact. The next point I have is that you have to create a GitHub portfolio and document all the data projects or data analytics or machine learning or visualizations or insights you have done in all these previous uh, steps and document all that in your GitHub repository. Your GitHub repository is actually going to be used in your interviews in order to demonstrate all the knowledge you have in data science. The last point I have is that you should have a very strong data science branded LinkedIn profile that shows and demonstrates that you have a lot of knowledge around data science and machine learning. You should also have links with your GitHub uh, repository in your LinkedIn profile. The reason you need this now is because you will probably not pass the screening phase of your CV just because you don't have a university degree. So you will have to contact the hiring manager directly through a message. Your message now should be very brief, straight to the point and also include links to your GitHub repository that demonstrate that you know how to run machine learning models and also demonstrates that you're a master of data science in general. Another reason you need LinkedIn is because you should try and contact all your friends and all connections that work as data scientists or work in an organization that you're trying to get in and try to get them to refer you for that data science job that you are applying for. Uh, if you manage to get that first initial interview now, again, you should have a very strong GitHub portfolio so you can actually go there and speak about all your achievements in data science. Right, so I think we have touched in all the steps you have to take in order to get a data science job without a degree. I know it's a lot and I know it's very difficult and challenging, but keep pushing through my data friends because someday you will make it and the day you will make it is going to be very rewarding for you as it's a very interesting job to work and it also pays very well. Right, 
This is the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, please click that like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for future videos. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video and I'm going to see you in the next video.